NCDs cause 30% of the deaths in this country and 50% of hospital problems are due to NCDs and that NCDs are the fastest growing cause of death in Africa and that we contribute uh, the biggest increase in NCDs currently in the world in Africa, about 27% in 10 years. Low and middle income countries actually contribute the largest amount of morbidity or dis disability from NCDs and, uh, and deaths in the world. And therefore, it is the poor countries and the poor people actually who suffer most. NCDs beget poverty and poverty also entrenches NCDs. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 19 years old. For eight years, I suffered because I was not even uh, accepting that I'm diabetic. Your time, I was able to get a feature because I was able to get a feature because I the symptoms of the diabetes, so I was able to get a I did it, it, it's an statement. You don't even believe that you have diabetes. You are so young, like I was 23 years old. You can't believe you have diabetes and you have a long life ahead of you. I like to name your name, Kiwangomo Nikwanza. At Ilawakati Squanga Nimeji, Tiki, Sikwanga Nina, Jipenda, Nona, Aina Jani Shingi, Nyonangani, my best is Angu to call each mate. Wahawana diabetes, Namini Konao, Sas Nilikwangani, Najichukia. I had to adjust to the life of being a diabetic, that is medication, that is checking my diet, that is exercise, and also stress management. Uh, in the year um, 2010, this was around, um, around uh, March, actually towards the end of March and the beginning of April. This is when I had a stroke. And re uh, very little did I realize that uh, this was a stroke. Because once there is an onset uh, of a stroke in you, you will find that you lose all, all what, you, what you are. I was a teacher first of all. teaching in one of these uh, best schools in Nairobi. During that time, I used to live a very good life with my wife and children. But since I got this disease, everything changed. I was born in four and a half years for a stroke. Sikuwai jua ti nilikuwa na stroke. Because nilisomea normal school, kila kitu kilikuwa normal. My parents walikuwa mekubali, rosa kwa normal. So sikuwai yonani, ishu kubwa vile. But challenge ilianza vile nilingia high school. I was sidelined. I was called various names. Uh, call it, call it um, but... My encourager, my father. I've accepted myself and and tried to cope with others. Kando na i uwanjo yake kuna ingi ne ira na angukanga. Aki anguka achi achi fahamu utame sa anguka kwa barabara na achi fahamu ni nuhapi ya kuhapi. I wake up. Uh... I found myself this way. Uh, 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 there before, uh, there, there before, I was well. Nili kujia kujia ni kuna siko sel at the age of five. Then. Life is quite sour. I was a big mama, I was a big mama back then. But I was a point I was a big mama, I was a big mama. For almost two years, I was wrong. 
but I'm going to play with Kosi, Nabudi home. I've had four children and uh, three had sickle cell. I've lost two. Um, I have one who still has sickle cell. The other one is a treat. A treat is a carrier like myself, but they don't exhibit symptoms. Ya kwanza before ni gundue juu alikuwa na nisumbua tu nilikuwa nimesema amerogwa na si urogi. Kurudi kujua ame ni hiyo sickle cell tukaanza kubishana na mwenzangu wando. Tunasema hii imetoka kwenyu, hii ugonjwa imetoka kwenyu. Sasa tunafruta, tunafrutana. Nilikuwa nikigonjeka sana na hii ugonjwa na si kwa ijua ni hii ugonjwa wa sickle cell ndinaniumiza. Nakumbuka nikiwa na wazazi wangu kabla waage nilikuwa nagonjeka lakini napelekwa tu hospitali sipimwi. Napewa tu hizo madawa za kawaida na rudi kwa nyumba. Na nikitu ya on and off. The biggest thing that sickle cell patients have is infections. They are very, very susceptible to infections. And that's why if you looked at how we manage them here, we give them the smaller ones. We give them an antibiotic called penicillin V. Now, when I tumea, kill a sick, whether they are sick or not, to try and prevent an infection entering their body. 2016, December, I was born with a child. We used to take her to the hospital, you know, normally, you know, when a baby is sick, the parent would be like, to be like hospital. So we take her to the hospital and she's given, you know, drugs for the headache, you know, two, three days, the, uh, the headache is gone. And then after the fourth day, the headache comes back. Just embracing and, and accepting that our baby had a tumor, it took us around a week because it was, it was heavy on us. The disease has been quite expensive and a challenge for me and my family because the surgery that I had done last year cost 1.7 million and uh, fortunately for me insurance covered the cost, all the costs for the surgery. This year I came for routine checkups and I found out I had four new tumours. So that's when I had to restart chemo this year. When somebody is diagnosed with cancer it affects the community because you realise this person is a father, uh, is a mother, is a sister, uh, and in some cases they are the primary breadwinners. So being diagnosed with cancer, going through treatment, looking for funds definitely destabilizes the family unit. She's taking 33 sessions of radiotherapy. The 33 sessions is costing half a million. Treatment of this uh, uh, diabetes is, 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 is costly. People think it is only the drugs, but there are still other requirements beyond the drugs. Nutrition comes number one at 65 percent. Exercise comes second at 26 percent. Stress management comes at 10 percent. Treatment at 5 percent. What we do so that we may be able to continue and we may be able to survive maybe for that long, we try to go for the cheapest thing that we can be able to afford. I find it slightly easy. Simply because my wife is a contributor to NHIF. Actually, this is what is healthy. I am now talking about the majority who are not able to, to access to uh, NHIF. What is going to happen with them? What is not even going to happen with them. What is really happening with them? Best of all, they are not going to do it. I don't have a medical insurance because I'm currently not engaged in a job, so I cannot pay for my medical insurance. There are also services that are not covered by the National Hospital Insurance Fund for diabetic cases, for hypertensive cases. It's been very hard because sometimes Nina Pelikwa Kenyata, Unalazwa. Umekuja, you have pain. And we put you in the ward, and we manage you on the average of three, four days. We do a few blood tests, and you require one blood transfusion. And then on the average, you stay for about five days, and there are these dowels that we give you regularly. You need about 230,000 shillings, one admission. The other big challenge is medication. It's expensive. Our patients come, they see the right doctors, but they can't afford the medicines, most of them. 
or sickle cell disease is a neglected disease. But unfortunately, it takes away many of our children. They die as malaria, and it's not malaria. They die as pneumonia, and it's not pneumonia. They get strokes. They also die by depression. In Africa, the statistics say that between 50 and 80 percent of children born with sickle cell die before age five. Why? Because of care. Some even without ever knowing what killed them. The human resources for health, the nurses and the clinical officers, have practiced in an environment that only dealt with malaria, TB and HIV for a long time. And therefore, their knowledge and skills uh, for advocating for healthy behavior for NCDs and screening for NCDs and giving primary care for NCDs has dwindled over time. And therefore, they require uh, new skills and, uh, and, and education to be able to uh, align themselves to this uh, growing problem. Stroke has not even accepted as a medical emergency, which actually we are fighting for. The second challenge has been availability and supply of essential medicines for primary care of NCDs, especially antihypertensive medications and simple diagnostics, diabetes medications and simple diagnostics, and also cancer screening for cervical cancer, breast cancer, and making sure that they are detected early and referred before they are too late. Two years or three years ago, if you had a heart attack, there'd be no money available to you. Now at least you get 500,000 if, if you have been keeping up with your NHIF and you have all your documentations. But the main challenge we have is that we are able to make a diagnosis, but we're not able to move forward and provide treatment because of financial issues. Yeah, so you'll have young children who maybe are five or eight, six years old, who have a heart condition, whose pa parents are extremely poor, who still have access to the 500,000, say for a heart surgery, but they still need to get another 500,000. Many uh, emergencies which occur as a result of preventable uh, lifestyle changes and that uh, much more effect uh, in control of these diseases would be achieved uh, if we adopted uh, healthy living habits uh, instead of um, just clipping the leaves of a very big uh, tree what was slum sana sana si si ujiambia na communicable diseases something like cancer as easy to shika si watu wa slum kwa sababu cancer inashikaga wale watu wako na do ama nini mali kama kibera penye tunaishi ni watu wachache wenye wanajua vitu kama cancer ni communicable diseases na vile zinakosiwa sisi kama youth tunapenda hii life ya kupati life ya ku smoke vitu kama hizo so unapata hii ina increase more chances that could get easy gonjo. There's new technologies that are coming out, but the main thing is prevention. And prevention is just about lifestyle and people knowing what to do before they, they, they have the disease. Cancer is going to be a major, a major burden in Africa uh, and uh, low-income countries. So we need to be prepared for it. And that means we need to finance uh, the local hospitals and not just financing, but also trained, uh, trained the local uh, doctors on cancer management, what are the diagnostic protocols, so that they are aware. And we don't have to uh, bring every patient to Nairobi. So long as they can, the people in the local hospitals are trained, they can be able to manage those cases locally. So we need to have a place where the county enables the clinical team to have regular quality training where if I'm going to take you for this course, these are some of the things I need you to meet. And by the end of the day, there's an impact evaluation. Uh, if we had policy and systems and structures and protocols, that would guide a lot of things. Because uh, once you have policy, then how do we implement this policy, you know? Then everything else will fall in place. Training, drugs, uh, yeah, protocols. When someone arrives, what happens? Um, you need blood, you need medication, you need water. Uh, that would be very um, paramount. There should be centers of excellence of, uh, that look after sickle cell patients that are provided for in each and every country in the Af where sickle cell anemia is a problem. But up to today, how we treated sickle cell anemia in the 70s is still how we treat sickle cell anemia in this 2018. And because of that, we must address this issue 
as an emergency. Serikali yetu inatakiwa one igire maneno katikati isaidie kabisa ndani kabisa. Kama watoto kama hawa ni shule sio waende shule zingine common uh, common schools. They should be waeke shule zingine zile watafusomea ili ba kwa jinsi they need na they need care. Yeah, wanataka care. We need to be included or involved in decision making uh, uh, forums either at the county level and also at the national level especially when they are planning for the budget of uh, uh, non-communicable diseases the community needs to also be a little more educated on how to engage the policy process usually these policies are done by hearings uh, that happen before the budget majority of our population do not understand how to participate in the policy process in the budget process so we need to educate uh, our population also in how to advocate for their rights and uh, also exercise their responsibilities i think the government and the county are doing a good job given the immensity of their problem of course i mean there, there are many things they could, they could do better yeah so making sure that the health facilities have uh, adequate infrastructure that the lines to get medication uh, more straightforward and uh, more affordable than they are. I would like to tell the NHIF and any other medical insurance to consider what a diabetic person goes through. At the end of the day, this person may require extra drugs. This person may require glucometer and the strips in order to measure them. So they, what they can do is that they can inculcate the system with the drugs. For example, instead of going to buy drugs, and then later pay for the NHIF, it doesn't make sense. Action uh, can only happen if appropriate resources are located. Currently, almost 80% of uh, our health budget is usually taken to uh, TB, malaria, reproductive health, which I think is okay, but if you consider that 30% uh, of mortality is due to NCDs, then it's only proper that at least, if not more, 30% of the health budget should be on NCDs.